Welcome to my channel, where we discuss everything and all things politics, economy, and development in Nigeria and around the world. And I told you, I've told you in this channel that the APC government in the last eight and a half years was the most corrupt government in Nigeria's history, going by the records of Transparency International. You can go to their website and go and check Cor Corruption Perception Index of Nigeria under the APC administration. Now, a chieftain of the All Progressive Congress has added his voice to confirm that which I have been saying here when he said that the corruption is the norm in the All Progressive Congress. Despite all the drama you are seeing about Betty Edu and uh, all kinds of things going on now. This APC chieftain is a former national chairman, APC for Northwest, Saleh Hulukman. He said that the allegation of corruption surrounding the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs since its formation in 2019 demonstrates how under the party, problems of corruption were allowed to continue. He said that this was heartbreaking because one of the campaign promises of APC in 2015 was war against corruption for which Nigerians invested their trust in the party and former President Muhammad Buhari. Lukman, in a statement issued in Abuja on Tuesday, said as it turned out, those expectations were not met. Adding that although there were flashes of attempts to fight corruption during the tenure of Buhari, it was, it was not able to achieve the, 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 the expectation of Nigerians and it was not able to change the orientation of politics away from being prebendar, that's feeling entitled to government funds. He said, if anything, prebendar politics took over APC and many public officials produced by the All Progressive Congress also became guilty of converting public resources to personal use. He said, and I quote, it's a recall how the Economic and Financial Crime Commission was reported to have seized 19.3 billion naira salary bailouts given to Kogi State by the federal government, which was deposited in an unlawful bank account domiciled with Sterling Bank PLC in November 2021. This is a state controlled by the APC. There are other similarly damaging allegations of how some APC controlled states were unable to pay salaries of workers. All, all these confirm Professor Richard Joseph's seminar description of prebendal politics in Nigeria as a system which enables divergent groups and constituencies to seek to accommodate their interest. At the level of the individual, it is a pattern of social behavior that is quickly learned and accepted. Debate about social costs and benefits regarding public policy choices of APC government for whatever it is worth can go on. However, so long as indices of poverty, cost of living, and welfare condition of the citizens remain below acceptable thresholds, public expenditure will be heavily suggestive of waste, low productivity, increasing influence of public officials, paltry gains for citizens, and misery for the greater majority of Nigerians. That's what Lukman, a chieftain of APC, calling out the APC 
for corruption. Now, what saved APC was that they were able to manipulate themselves back to power. What would have been exposed if it was Peter Obi or Atiku Abakar that is sitting at Asso Rock now, Nigerians would be shocked what would be revealed. So their saving grace actually was that they were able to maneuver their ways back to power and Nigerians in their docility accepted the rigging and moved on. Had it been that it was another party that took over as Nigerians voted, what would be exposed about APC would make Abacha look like a saint. But there, let us go, look at a few of the things, at least that are on public record, that was siphoned or allegedly siphoned under the APC. Remember that in May 2022, the Economic and Financial Crime Commission uncovered 90 billion naira alleged fraud involving the then suspended Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris. He was also, uh, this same Ahmed Idris was also arraigned alongside three others over 109 billion Naira fraud. That's how bad things were under the APC and has continued to be so. Former Governor of uh, Zamfara State, who is now the Minister of State for Defense, Matawale, was accused by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission of diverting 70 billion naira he sourced as loan from a bank purportedly for executing projects across local government areas of the state. He was accused of this. But he's now a minister. At that time, he was accused of this. The EFCC chairman then was Abdul Rashid Bawa. When Abdul Rashid Bawa was investigating this, Matawale in turn also accused the former EFCC chairman Abdul Rashid Bawa of demanding $2 million from him. That is how messy the whole thing was. But the EFCC were accused of corruption. The APC governor was accused of corruption. Corruption was just walking on four legs all over the place. Now we all are feasting on Sade Omar Farouk, the former humanitarian affairs minister who was alleged to have misappropriated 37 billion naira. The FCC is investigating it. Will it amount to anything? Already we are on, on the issue of Dr. Bet Beta Edu. 580 uh, something million dollars, million naira, sorry. That was supposed to be used for the vulnerable in a few states, Lagos, Aquabom, Cross River, and Ondo or so, put in private account. We have a minister, serving minister, whose company is alleged to be one of the beneficiaries that it was a consultancy company. Over 400 million was paid for consultancy. What was there? What were they consulting for? When was the tender for that contract? Was it done through public bidding? And when was that done? Which newspapers were, 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 were the thing published? Because by law, by procurement law, you're supposed to put it out in the public, publish it in newspapers. 
as an advert to inform Nigerians that there is this bid going on. You can apply if you know you are qualified. How many companies bidded for that? But a company belonging to the Minister of Internal Affairs is believed to be among the beneficiaries. And all we hear is that the minister is invited to code of conduct. Uh, the presidency has invited him. That's what all we see in the newspaper. But this is just a tip of the iceberg about the APC administration. And uh, it, it, basically the reason I, I make this video is for those who are putting hope on President Bola Metinubu that is going to fight corruption. He's fighting corruption. People are hailing him that he is fighting corruption because Betted was told to, to step aside. What about the Matawale issue? Why is EFCC not talking about it again? Does it mean because Bawa was sacked, the matter is over? What about Bawa himself? He was detained for months, EFCC chairman. Nobody was told his offense. Is that how you fight corruption? Without transparency? Because Abu Rashid Bawa, Nigeria should have been told the reason why he was sacked. Abu Rashid Bawa was not, he had not been, he had, he had, I doubt if he had spent up to three years in that position. He was unceremoniously detained and then shoved aside. And those he was pursuing are now at the centers of governance. When you look at this kind of thing, you will agree with Lukman, the chieftain of the APC, that indeed corruption is second nature to the All Progressive Congress. Even though they came to power accusing the PDP of corruption, but what they have done, what they have done in eight years, pales in comparison to what PDP did in 16 years. And the country is bleeding. And the Nigerians are feeling the pinch of eight and a half years of APC's squandermania and misgovernance and uncontrolled corruption. And now if corruption was this rampant, as Lukman said, under President Muhammad Buhari, who came on board at least openly to fight corruption, then why do you put your hope that war against corruption is going to work under President Bola Metinubo? I do not think that Nigerians expect President Bola Tinubu to fight corruption. Before you ask President Bola Tinubu to fight corruption, go and read what Obasanjo said about Bola Tinubu in Obasanjo's book, My Watch. Then you can come back and tell us that this APC government will fight corruption and research the country. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video, because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you and yours.